this video, we're going to look at the structure of the atom. So our nucleus contains protons and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons are neutral or have no charge. Together, we can call them nucleons. Um, so the other subatomic particle, aside from protons and neutrons, are electrons. So let's just compare a couple of different characteristics of these particles. Protons and electrons have equal and opposite charge. So a proton is plus one and an electron will be minus one. So in an atom, which is neutral, you'll always have the same number of protons and electrons so that the charges cancel out to be a net charge of zero. If you don't have the same number of protons and electrons, we no longer call it an atom. We will then use the term ion, which we'll look at later. The protons and neutrons weigh approximately the same amount. They each weigh one AMU, or one atomic mass units. Um, so this is a very, very small unit since these are very, very small particles. Um, there's about 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd AMU in a gram, so this is a very small quantity. But still, notice that the electron's mass is even smaller than a proton and neutron. It's about 1 1836th of a proton or neutron. Um, so really, you don't have to really know this number. You just see that an electron has negligible mass. Um, so if you remember from Rutherford's experiment, um, all the density of the atom, um, the dense part of the atom, all the mass of the atom was in the nucleus. And that contains protons and neutrons because their mass was each one. And the electrons were in that empty space. When an alpha particle hit an electron, it didn't bounce off of it. They went right through that empty space. Um, so the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, the electrons are outside the nucleus. In our modern day model, they're in orbitals, but right now you just need to know that they're outside the nucleus. Okay, the atomic number, and you might see sometimes some sources refer to it with a simple Z, but you don't really need to know that. The atomic number is the number of protons, um, and that is going to depend on which element it is. So the number of protons is what distinguishes one type of atom from another. Carbon atoms have a different atomic number or different number of protons than a nitrogen atom. If you change the number of protons, you change the element, you change the identity. Okay. And in a neutral atom, protons are equal to the number of electrons. Now, each periodic table might have the atomic number in a different place. So the one that you are working with um, looks something like this. And you'll notice here there's a little key in the bottom left-hand corner, and it tells me atomic number is this top left-hand number on this periodic table. Depending on your periodic table, it might be in a different location. So I can't always say that it's going to be right here, but we are working with this periodic table for our class um, so you can get used to where it is. So notice boron has an atomic number of five, carbon six, nitrogen seven, so on and so forth. Each element has a set number of protons. If it does not have six protons, it is no longer carbon, and so on and so forth. Nuclear charge is just the charge of the nucleus. So if we think about what's in our nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. Which of those two things have a charge? The protons are positive and the neutrons are neutral. So they don't, the neutrons don't contribute to charge. So really the nuclear charge is just the charge of all the protons. You look at how many protons you have and it will be positive that number because each of them would contribute plus one. So it has the same value as the atomic number. So for example, carbon. Any carbon atom, okay, if I look it up on my periodic table, and you should always have your periodic table handy, okay, this is the little box I see for carbon. Don't forget that bottom left-hand corner um, has your uh, little key. So this is my atomic number, this top left-hand corner here. So um, six is my atomic number for carbon. So there are six protons, and it doesn't matter how many neutrons this would have because neutrons are neutral when looking at charge. So the charge of my nucleus would be plus six. So if you're ever asked for nuclear charge, it's just the number of protons. Remember that my, my entire atom, when I look at not just the nucleus but also the electrons, the entire atom is neutral. Here I was just asking for nuclear charge. Okay, there's another number called the mass number. And the mass number, and sometimes it's given the symbol A, is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So it's the sum of the protons and neutrons in that particular atom. Why do you think this is called mass number? Well, if you remember, 
a proton has a mass of 1 AMU, and a neutron has a mass of 1 AMU. So if we add their numbers together, that's about the mass of the entire atom in AMU, because electrons had negligible mass. So that's why it's called the mass number. Okay, we can show the mass number and atomic number in a nuclear symbol. Sometimes it's called isotopic or isotopic notation um, or nuclear, the nuclear symbol sometimes this is called, but you would put the element um, symbol. So for carbon, for instance, I'd put a C. If it was nitrogen, there'd be an N, so on and so forth. Atomic number goes in the bottom left-hand corner and mass number goes in the uh, top left-hand corner. And this is, as I said, depending on your periodic table, your atomic number might be in a different location. But this is a set symbol, a set notation that us scientists can all agree upon. So when, I'm, when you're asked to write the nuclear symbol, you want to write it in this manner. You put the element symbol, bottom left is atomic number, top left is mass number. You can write it like this, or you can put the element with a dash and then put the mass number after it. So notice in this notation, I don't have atomic number anywhere, and that's okay because if I have the symbol, I can always go to my periodic table and look up the atomic number. Okay. Um, remember that atoms of a given element must contain the same number of protons. So if this is carbon, this bottom number here has to be 6 or it's not carbon. But the number of neutrons can vary. Okay. Do you remember what it's called if you have the same number of protons but different neutrons? Those are called isotopes. Okay, so isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons and therefore they have different mass numbers. So for example, carbon. Okay, carbon, you, there's such a thing as carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. And they can be written in either of these ways, with mass numbers on top, atomic number on the bottom, or you put the mass number after the dash. Okay, so remember that this top number represents the protons and neutrons, and that bottom number represents the number of protons. So I might ask you, well, how do you find the numbers of neutrons? All you do is you take these two numbers and subtract. If this is the protons and the neutrons, and I can subtract out the protons, then I would just have the numbers of neutrons. And what's nice about this setup of a notation is that it looks like you're solving the subtraction problem to find the number of neutrons. Here's your bigger number minus your small number. How do you, that's how you get the neutrons. Um, so visually, it kind of looks like you are setting up a subtraction problem to find the numbers of neutrons. So the number of neutrons is not anywhere in your actual um, symbol. Here, the first one just happens to have the same number of neutrons as protons. But notice like this one, 7. It's not anywhere in my actual symbol, but I can get the neutrons via subtraction. Now, one other thing I want you to notice is that the mass number is not anywhere on the actual periodic table. So if I go to carbon, um, there is this number that has a decimal. It's um, not a whole number, okay, and that's called atomic mass. That is not mass number. Atomic mass is really just a weighted average of all the possible mass numbers for that particular element. So carbon can have carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. Carbon 12 is actually uh, the most abundant in nature, and that's why the atomic mass is closest to 12. Um, but that's something we will look at later. So again, if you're asked for mass number, that's always given, um, the mass number is always given in your actual uh, symbol. Okay, it's not given from the periodic table. So let's look at an example. Find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons given this symbol. Take a moment, try the problem, and then pa and pause the video, and then check your work. So this is um, iodine. It has a mass number of 127. That's the top left-hand number, and it has an atomic number of 53. If I wanted to, I could look this up on my periodic table, um, though all the information I really need is in this problem statement. So this atomic number is 53, which matches the one on the periodic table, um, and that tells me the number of protons. And since it is a neutral atom, and I know it's neutral because there is no charge indicated, um, then I know that the number of electrons is the same as protons because it has to cancel each other out, plus one, minus one, 53 plus has to 
cancel out with 53 minus um, so that I have an overall neutral charge or no net charge. This top number is the mass number. This is not the number of neutrons, but it is the number of protons and neutrons added together. Neutrons themselves are not written anywhere in my actual symbol. But again, this is kind of looking like it's setting up the subtraction problem to find the number of neutrons. This is my protons and neutrons, and this is my protons. I just subtract to find my number of neutrons. So my number of neutrons whoop, is 74. Okay. Again, I'm using my mass number that's actually in the problem statement, not the atomic mass, when trying to find neutrons. This mass number just happens to be the most abundant isotope because it's actually closest to my, mass, uh, my atomic mass that's in the periodic table. So take a moment, try this example, pause the video, and then check your work. So find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in nickel, that has a 62 mass number and 20 as the atomic number. And again, there's really no need to look this up on my periodic table because all the information is right here in my symbol. There's 28 protons, so there must also be 28 electrons since that's the atomic number. This mass number is my protons and neutrons added together. So if I take that number and subtract out my protons, okay, then I should find that there are 34 neutrons. Take a moment and try these two examples. These are written in the other notation where you have the symbol, dash, and then the mass number. Now at first glance you might say, hey, there's no atomic number, so how do I num know the number of protons and electrons? Well, you can still look up Ra in your periodic table, it's radium, and know that now you see it has an atomic number of 88. So notice that I don't even need the atomic number in my symbol. Um, as long as I have the element symbol, I know the atomic number and vice versa. And so sometimes even when you have these top numbers, this bottom number, this atomic number might intentionally be not written um, so that you do have to go and reference your periodic table. So take a moment, try these problems, check your work. So Ra has an atomic number of 88, so there's 88 protons and 88 electrons since they must cancel each other out so that the atom has a net charge of zero. And my neutrons I get via subtraction, 226, okay, minus 88, gives me 138. Find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in P32. If I look up phosphorus, it has an atomic number of 15, so there are 15 protons and 15 electrons. To get neutrons, I take the mass number, and remember that the mass number is given in the problem statement. It's given in the symbol. Okay, so even though the atomic mass is not is 30.9, I'm not using that number. I never look up mass number in the periodic table. I just use this mass number that's written here, okay, because that's the atomic not mass, not the mass number. And I do 30. 32 minus 15, and I get 17 neutrons. Notice that this might not be the most abundant isotope. It's not the closest whole number to my atomic mass, and that's totally fine. Let's practice going the opposite direction. Write the correct symbol for the following atoms. Okay, take a moment, try your work, uh, try it out, and then check your work. And sorry, I have this, forgot to animate that. Okay, 22 protons, 22 electrons, 25 neutrons. Think about what identifies the element. Well, it's the number of protons that identifies the element. You could have also used the number of electrons since I know that these two must be equal in a, in a neutral atom. So if I look up the atomic number of 22, I see that goes with titanium, Ti. Okay, and 22 is the atomic number. That's going to be the number in the bottom left. And how do I get mass number, which would go in the top left? Well, I add the protons and neutrons together. So 25 plus 22 gives me 47. This number is not coming from my periodic table at all. It might be close to that number or it might not. But it is coming from adding the protons and neutrons together that are given in my problem statement. I never look up the mass number. I can look up atomic number to find the element, but I don't look up mass number. Okay, try this one. Nine protons, nine electrons, ten neutrons. Notice the protons and electrons are equal because it's a neutral atom. So if I look up the atomic number um, nine, because there's nine protons, um, I see that that would be fluorine. Okay, so fluorine has an atomic number of nine. That's my symbol. The nine would be my bottom left-hand corner number. And in the top left, I need mass number. So I would add the protons and neutrons together and I would get 19. And again, remember that you can put the uh, symbol dash the mass number after it. 
Okay, in this last example here, 33 protons, 33 electrons, 32 neutrons, 33 and 33 protons and electrons, that is what's going to um, be equal since it's a neutral atom. It's the protons that identify the atom. So the fact that there's 33 protons, if I look it up, that's arsenic. I'm sorry, I gave that away already there. And the mass number I get by adding the protons and neutrons together, that would give me 65. And notice I picked this example specifically because 65 is pretty different from the mass, uh, the atomic mass that's on your periodic table, and that's okay for this. It is just not an abundant isotope that you find in nature. Um, but I want to make sure that you remember, you do not look up mass number. You add protons and neutrons to get the mass number. Or like in the following example, the previous example, you are given the mass number and you subtract to find neutrons. Okay. Take another moment and try this example. Um, and this should kind of help cement uh, your understanding of some of these concepts. Each atom is a different, each row is a different atom, so there's some pieces missing, and you should be able to solve for all the other columns that are missing based on the information in that row. So take a moment, try it, do it out, and then check your work. So K42, the fact that it's K, potassium tells me that um, there are 19 protons if I look up the atomic number. Um, uh, since the mass number is 42, I can subtract out the protons, and that gives me the number of neutrons. The number of electrons must be equal to the number of protons, since it's a neutral atom. The nuclear charge is just the charge of the nucleus, so how many protons you have, which again is the atomic number. And it's positive, that number, because each proton, proton contributes plus one. The only other thing in the nucleus is the neutrons, which have no charge. And this is potassium, which you can find on your periodic table. So notice that protons, electrons, and nuclear charge all the same number written, and that's going to be true all the way down these uh, all these rows. Cu65, copper has a 29 protons because that's the atomic number if I look it up. If I take the mass number 65 and subtract out the protons, I should get 36 neutrons. The electrons will be the same as the protons. The nuclear charge should be the same as the protons, and this is copper. If I have protons, I can identify the element. Okay, it's selenium. And the fact that there's 46 neutrons, I can add them to the protons and get the mass number, which should be after the dash using these, this notation. This 80 is not something you look up in the periodic table. It's some, the mass number is something you get by adding the protons and neutrons together. Or you would be given the mass number in the symbol and asked to solve for neutrons. So it would be one way or the other. But again, you do not look up mass number in the periodic table. Okay, your uh, electrons are 34, nuclear charge is 34, and this is selenium. Okay, here I don't give you the number of protons, but I do give you the number of electrons, and if it's an atom, the number of protons would be the same, so it's 16 protons, which identifies sulfur, okay, and if I add protons and neutrons together, I would get the mass number, in this case, 31. The nuclear charge is the same as protons, and this is sulfur. And this last one, um, I don't give you the number of protons, but I do give you the nuclear charge, so I must know that there are 10 protons, which tells me it's neon. And if there are 9 neutrons, I can get the mass number by adding protons and neutrons together, and I get 19. Again, this is not a number you look up. It's a number you get from adding protons and neutrons together, or it's a number that's given in the problem statement. Okay, 10 electrons and 